Hey, hello everybody, it's your boy Durf, and welcome back to another episode of Scarab Makenik! So this video is a continuation on the series of camera controlled vehicles. I'm gonna go ahead and link all the videos in the description down below, so if you want to watch from the start of this amazing logical journey, uh, you can watch from start to finish. So in the last video, I showed you guys this scorpion tank build. It's the same thing as this thing over here, it's just it looks a lot better. And this tank, it will drive wherever you're pointing. So right now I'm pressing W to go forward, obviously. But if I press D, it will turn to drive to the right of where I'm pointing. So even if I point in a different direction, it'll still drive to the right relative to where I'm pointing. So this is a new type of WASD controls that's relative to the camera direction. Now I didn't really show you guys how to build this in the previous video, I just sort of explained how it works real quick. So I was still getting some questions on how this works. So today I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build this camera-controlled tank for yourselves. So then you can apply it to your own builds if you want. Okay, so step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build one of those camera-controlled tank steering systems. Uh, we're just going to start with a hunk of concrete and we're going to build our tank tracks here on the side. I'm just going to do, you know, I'm just going to put them anywhere really, it doesn't really matter where. Uh, this, the point of this step-by-step -step tutorial isn't to build like a pretty tank. You guys can invest all the time that you want to make your awesome looking tank. This one's going to be a little bit derpy, but it will work all the same. All right, so then we put our seat. Uh, we're going to, you know, it, it really depends on how you want to design your tank, how you want to do it. If you want to put your seat on the turret, you totally can. Uh, you can use any seat that you want. I'm just going to... The, the point of this step-by-step -step tutorial, again, is just to show you how to build the tank control system. The design of the tank is up to you. Okay, so we are going to need an engine, one for each side. And we're also going to need two engines up at the front. Now these engines aren't actually for driving, they're just for positioning the turret. One for the pitch, and one for the uh, angle. So we're going to go ahead and stick a bearing down. And we're gonna build our pipe up a little bit. The reason why I'm using a T-piece uh, mini pipe is because I wanna put an exometer right on top, just like this. And then I'm gonna build the rest of my turret along the side here. And then I'm gonna bring it right back to the middle, to the center point above the bearing. Stick my vertical bearing. Okay, so on the bearing over here, uh, we're actually gonna put an orientation block so that the sensor is pointed forward. So when we switch the orientation block over to camera mode, this orientation block will want to point where our camera is pointing. So it's super important to have an exometer. That's why I put the exometer down here like this. Uh, it's also important to note that when you're placing the exometer, You'll notice there's a, you can see like the ghost image of the little screen and the needle is going to be pointing 45 degrees to the left, to the upper left. That's the way that you want to, to put your exometer. So if you're putting it on the side of something, you want it to be like that with the screen on bottom and the needle pointing to the top left. If you're putting it on a surface, you want to put your screen on bottom, needle pointing to the top left. That's how you know the exometer is being placed right side up. And if my exometer was on top like this, and then my turret ended up flipping upside down, then this exometer would be upside down giving the wrong reading. So that's why I'm putting my exometer down here so that it's not gonna flip upside down ever. It's just gonna turn left to right like this. That's exactly what I needed to do. And I'm gonna switch it over to compass mode. So that's gonna give me the angle that this exometer is facing relative to the world north, which is in that direction. So let's finish this tank turret. We're going to put down a couple of math blocks and we're going to set those, uh, we're going to crouch and set to those two. One's going to be the drive signal and one of them's going to be the steering signal. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to connect the orientation block to both math blocks. Then one math block goes to the engine here, one math block goes to the engine there. This one is the steering signal, so this engine is powering the steering bearing. And then the drive signal with the arrows going up down, that's going to be powering the pitch bearing. 
the thing that controls the pitch of our turret. So now if we take this off our lift and we power our engine, not too powerful, we don't want it to be uh, swinging around wildly, we can see that our turret is already trying to point towards our camera. But sometimes a bearing might be flipped, so just go ahead and flip your bearings until it works perfectly. Just like that. So now we have a turret that points where we're pointing. And the exometer underneath there is giving us the angle that our turret is looking at. We're going to need to put another exometer on the body of our tank. Again, remember, we need the screen on the bottom and the needle pointing 45 degrees to the left, the top left. This exometer is going to be the compass reading for the tank body. So as you might be able to tell, the turret is on a bearing right over here, and it can be pointing in any direction. And the tank body is the tank body, of course, and it can be pointing in any direction. So if I go like this, rotate my tank, all of a sudden my tank is pointing in this direction, and my turret could be pointing the other direction. So I need an exometer for my turret, and I need an exometer for my tank body so that I can measure the relative angle between the two. So all we need to do then is get a math block and subtract the two. And this is going to give us the difference. So as you can see on the math block, there's a white dot and a black dot. So we're going to paint one exometer. The one on the turret is going to be white and the one on the tank body is going to be black. So then we connect the exometers to the math block, the subtraction block, so as you can see, when the turret and tank body are in the same position, you get zero degrees. And that's always going to be the case, no matter what, no matter which direction your tank is facing. If your turret is also facing the same direction, you're going to get zero degrees. Zero. Or 360. That depends on which way you look at it. But if they're facing the same direction, you're going to get zero degrees. And if you look over one way, you're going to get... 90 degrees there you go you see 90 degrees if you're turning around you see 180 degrees so this is the relative angle between your turret and your tank body now we're going to take this angular difference and we're going to stick it into two math block functions these functions are going to be sine and cosine so you just go ahead to the math block keep on switching until you reach sine and cosine I already hit cosine on that one, so I'll just do sine on this one. We're just gonna go ahead and connect that difference block to sine and cosine. We're also going to need the negative versions of sine and cosine. So like sine times negative one and cosine times negative one. That's actually a really easy thing to do. All we have to do is just stick a subtraction block to each. And it's like, it's like we're subtracting zero it's like we're doing zero minus cosine. So that's like the negative cosine. And it's like we're doing zero minus sine. So we're getting negative sine. So here we have cosine, negative cosine, sine, negative sine. We're also gonna need our WASD controls from our seat. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect our seat to the WASD converter blocks. So now we have the angles and WASD. So the final step is actually combining the two with some math so that the tank knows how to drive relative to the angle of our turret. And this does get a little bit nerdy, so if you're not able to follow along with the math, don't worry about it because you'll still be able to build a tank like this. You just gotta pay attention to how to wire this thing. So again, we have an engine for each side, just like so. And we're gonna make sure these bearings are facing forward. And now we need to pass in a mathematical value into each of these engines. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put down an addition block on each side. And these addition blocks are going to be the sum of the values for the left side and the sum of the values for the right side. So these blocks are in entire control of each of the sides of the tank. Now we're also going to need another math block underneath it right here and here. And these are going to be negative versions of the math. So we're just going to connect that straight into the addition block. Straight into the addition block. 
So normally, uh, all of our math is going to be connected into the addition block. Some of our math needs to be inverted. We're going to times it by negative one before sending it to the tank tread. Okay, so now onto the complicated math. It's actually not super complicated, but for some people it is. So just uh, pay close attention. We'll uh, do this together. So for each of these math blocks, we're going to get multiplication. We're going to do the drive signal on these two multiplication blocks over here. And we're going to do the steering signal on the two multiplication blocks over here on this side. So these two are for steering, and these two are for driving forward and back. Now, for driving forward and backwards, we actually want to multiply one of the drive signals by cosine. So we're going to put that to a drive signal multiplication. And then we're also going to need a negative sign for the next multiplication block here. So cosine and negative sign connected to drive multiplication. And for steering, we're going to need negative cosine for one of them and positive sign for the other. Now all of these multiplication blocks need to be connected to the tank treads. So you know what, I'm actually just going to move these uh, math blocks down. I'm sorry, I know I, uh, I, I'm sorry, I know I was doing a step-by-step -step tutorial, but I'm just going to move these math blocks down so that it's a little bit easier to see the connections. You don't want these wires to be in the way. So it's the same setup as before. One addition block going straight to the engines, and one subtraction block going to the addition block. Okay, so now we have enough space to actually do our wiring to both sides. So the math block that has the drive signal and positive cosine connected to it, this math block, we're gonna connect straight to both tank treads. Straight to the left and right side. Now the math block that has the negative sign and the drive signal, it's gonna go to the left side addition block, but it's gonna go to the right side negative block. Okay, so the negative sign, we're gonna invert on the right side before sending it to the tank tread. Okay, so the math block that's connected to the turning signal and positive sign, the positive sign function, we're gonna do straight to both addition blocks. They're getting, they're getting sent straight to the tank treads. But the math block that's connected to the steering signal and negative cosine, the negative cosine is being sent to the right side into the addition block, but it's getting inverted for the left side. And those are all of the connections that you need for this relative tank steering system. So just to make sure, you have three connections going to the positive block, one connection going to the negative block for each side. So let's give our engines some power. So here we are on my tank. Let's just point my turret in some random direction and press W, and our tank turns to drive in that direction. If I were to press A, it turns to drive left relative to where I'm pointing. And this is the relativistic camera tank controls. Hopefully you guys found this step-by-step -step build tutorial useful. This is probably the last tank logical video that I'm going to be making on Scrap Mechanic. And next video we're going to be mo moving on to this guy over here. Can you guess what it is? We're going to be saving that for next time. So if you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!